normally would try to write something, but I'm telling you, I've had a heck of a time uh, trying to figure out the time to do that as my little ones get older and they kind of keep multiplying. So uh, I hope you can bear with me. I know this isn't like pretty or professional, so it just is what it is. Um, what God showed me today, I kind of, I have to share because it got me so excited. Uh, let me just tell you real briefly why I think it got me so excited. My whole life, I thought I got this whole story of Easter and Christmas and who Jesus was. And I mean, I knew what I was taught. I did. I understood it. I read my Bible. Um, but it wasn't until I was 30. Um, and without telling you the whole huge story, basically, I, um, I realized that I'd been believing what other people had told me. And as I, the Bible started to come alive to me for the first true time, um, I started having questions as to why this Jesus that I saw, why we weren't teaching it this way anymore, why it was ifs or maybes or it was stories and it was nice things we tried to live like him, but I felt like I was missing it. I felt like I had religion had become a thing that I believed religion more than I believed God's word. And if God's word kind of pushed against what I'd been taught religiously, I didn't, I was learning. I, something rose up into me and I had to start asking questions. Um, and it's been rough in a lot of ways. It's been amazing. Personally, I feel like I'd have never grown more in my life. Um, and knowing Jesus really as he is and what his word shows us, but it's been hard relationally and, um, especially in certain groups of people. And so I'm just putting this out there to tell you that my heart in this is so praying that it is heard not coming against people or what they believe. Um, my heart is for us to come around what God's word says and who God as our father really is um, so that we can really see the freedom. This particular, um, m this morning, uh, totally out of the blue, actually, I wasn't even expecting this. Uh, God showed me an answer to something I was praying for a while ago, um, a message that I heard since I was little that was relayed again recently uh, was about the shepherd, about the shepherd and, and the sheep. And I think if you go to church much, you've heard that and believers are called sheep and God is the shepherd. And I hear that analogy and I see it throughout scripture and I resonate with it a lot. But there's one analogy that I, until, until I was an adult, probably within the last eight years, um, I never questioned. It just was, just who was God was, um, until I saw He wasn't. And it's the analogy of um, the Good Shepherd and saying that the Good Shepherd, if a sheep wanders, if a sheep continues to go down the, the wrong path, um, that He will break its legs, and that that will cause the sheep to trust the father, that he will then be able to feed the sheep, that it will learn that the, sh the shepherd had only good things in mind. And um, depending on who you hear it from or what situations have gone on in their own life, um, it can be spun a billion different ways. And um, again, my heart with this is not to speak against people who've spoken it because I have such respect for them and have learned so much. But my heart above all else I, I don't know any other way to say it, but for the last eight years, I can no longer sit by when I hear my dad, my father, being told to the masses as untrue to what his word says he is. So that's where I'm coming from today, and especially um, at the time that we celebrate today, Good Friday, and what his son did and what he meant for us to, to receive. I just wanted to go there, and I wanted to visit this analogy and I wanted to talk about what God's own word says, because it's pretty phenomenal. Um, it, jump back to growing up when I kind of thought that God was the one doing all these things, causing these things, that it was my fault that I had messed up and that I deserved it. Um, and I, I don't want to take you through all the scriptures that people use to defend that. I'm not here to fight a battle. I'm here to, to show what, what God's word just jumps out to me. Uh, what I learned as I was older is the Lord as our shepherd he has uh, Psalm 23 
is a great one. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. I love that. I learned that since a little kid. And sometimes when you you hear it so often, you don't think about it. I started to think about it when I was older. And I, I love how it talks about, he does this. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness. It's all about our good shepherd and what he does for us. And then it switches and it says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because you're with me. And I love that. It's just kind of this picture of, the sheep that I never saw following the Lord, following, he leads, he leads. And then all of a sudden, I walk. And I think a lot of people think that um, he leads you through the valley of the shadow of death, but that's not what the word is really saying there. It's saying though, yea, though I walk. And I, I see the sheep that's kind of gone astray here, walking through the valley of the shadow of death. And uh, a pretty, it's pretty awesome. He says his rod and his staff, they don't beat me, they comfort me. They're there. If we know David, um, King David in the Bible, before he became King David, he was a shepherd boy. And he did some amazing feats. He, uh, I know he killed animals with his bare hands, and he knew what his rod and his staff were for. And they were not ever biblically linked to destroying the sheep or hurting the sheep in any manner. Um, I mean, gosh, if we if we think about it, if, if my children continue, can you imagine if they continue to run into the street despite what I've told them? If I was to take my car and run them over and crush their legs just to teach them a lesson, I would be put in prison for the rest of my life. We would know that is not a good father. And yet we are portraying our dad like that, our, our heavenly father. And we say, and it is with a well-intentioned heart, but what I... I'm realizing as we're repeating what we've heard and not what God is showing himself to be. Um, I love it in Luke 15, four through five, uh, Jesus is talking, he says, what man of you having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does he not leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. That's our father. This picture that I used to, I, a family member, I don't remember who it was, had a picture of the sheep on um, Jesus's shoulders. And I remember hearing that was the broken leg and that's the sheep that he had to break its leg. But that's not what you hear in God's word. It says it was lost. He laid it on his shoulders because he found it rejoicing. And it goes on to say, all the angels in heaven rejoice when a lost sheep is found. Um, again, nothing about breaking. But what really blew me away is this morning, um, as I'm thinking about the cross and what we remember, what Jesus went through in the cross. And gosh, I'm still trying to wrap my head around every one of the prophecies that he fulfilled from starting with the Garden of Gethsemane and where he shed blood and it dropped on, on ground and how the first curse that was ever placed was on the ground, that out of the sweat of our brow, we will, we will eat. And he sweat blood and started redeeming the ground. I mean, who knew that? It's all in there. It's pretty phenomenal. Um, but take it to the end. Take the end. We know the New Testament, the more familiar you get, it says um, Jesus is the Lamb of God. He is the fulfillment of the Passover that the the Jewish people still sac or still practice and they sacrifice when Jesus or when the Lord, excuse me, brought the Israelites out of Egypt that night when they had to sacrifice a lamb for their house. That is what we're, Jesus was the fulfillment of because it was never about that lamb. It was about the lamb of God that would come and it would die so that we could all receive um, complete remission of our sins. Interesting enough, Exodus twelve forty six, where it's God is giving instructions through Moses to the people of Israelites. He says, in one house, it shall be eaten. Speaking of this lamb, you shall not carry any of the flesh outside of the house, nor shall you break any of its bones. Again, in Psalm 34, 20, talking back about the Passover and also about prophesying future about the Messiah who would come. It says, he guards all his bones, not one of them is broken. Go forward to John nineteen thirty six, where Jesus is on the cross. And uh, did you know, it, it blows my mind from the point of him shedding blood through sweat in the Garden of Gethsemane to the crown of thorns, to the l complete beating he took. Um, with whips and chains and however they did it, flogging that was horrendous. It said there was a skin left on his back that by his stripe, it even says one stripe. I can imagine his entire back look like one huge stripe with rip flesh. We are healed. 
all of that, all the way to the cross where he hung there and he waited. It says not one of his bones was broken. Now, interesting enough, this, this was pretty cool. I was talking to Mackenzie and her friend on their way home from youth group on Wednesday night um, about Jesus and when he went through. And it was then when it started to hit me that um, on the cross, they usually would let the people stay there until they died and they would suffocate. Um, but because Jesus was crucified on a Friday and Saturday is the Sabbath in Jewish culture, they wanted to take them off the cross because it was a holy day and they didn't they didn't do any work in particular on a holy day and that was considered work. And so the soldiers were ordered to go and break the legs of the um, people on the cross so that they would not be able to hold their bodies up and they would suffocate to death and they would die. Well, in scripture in John 19 where it's talking through that, Jesus gave up his spirit because it says earlier that no man can take his life. No man can take his life, but he lays it down and he can pick it up back up again. And he willingly, after he had fulfilled all of what was said of him in scriptures, he laid down his life and he died. So when the soldiers came to see him, they pierced his side and out ran blood and water and they realized he was dead. That's a sign of a broken heart. We'll talk to doctors today. He literally died of a broken heart. Not one of his bones needed to be broken so that he would die on that cross. He gave up his life for each of us. So the Lamb of God, God's Lamb of God that all of the Old Testament points to, Jesus Christ in the flesh, bore every punishment, every sin, everything we could ever do. And if any sheep deserved to have their legs broken, it had to be him because of what he bore in our place. And our Father would not even in the worst of all punishments, allow his own son's legs to be broken. Not only would he not break them, but he wouldn't allow anybody else to. So I'm giving this to you as the gift that he gave me today, that my friends, religion takes the heart out of who God is. God isn't about religion. He's about a relationship. And he sent his son to show you that he is a good good father. That whatever you're going through, there are answers in his word for what his heart is for you. That Jesus bore all of the punishment that you ever deserved. And if you are feeling that what you have is punishment from God, that he is breaking your legs, I'm telling you it is not true. Jesus bore it all. But the good news is, he's not in the grave. The secret is Easter. He rose. It's over, and we live in the resurrected Son. John nineteen thirty six says, For these things were done, that scripture should be fulfilled. Not one of his bones shall be broken. Not one was broken, and yours will not be broken by your father, because that is not a good, good father, and you have one. So happy Good Friday, everybody. It's a great day. We can celebrate today as we look Close our eyes and imagine what he bore on that cross and remember that not one bone in his legs were broken. Your father has nothing bad to give. Everything he has is good. And because of Jesus, when you put your trust in him, all of the bad you deserve was on his son and all of the good his son deserved is given to you freely because he loves you. Be blessed.